So with the Majestic Rider, uh, today here with Buttons, so we're just practicing getting on. He's a horse that's sold and uh, put some training on him, so I'm just making sure he's good with all the stuff they need to do. And he hasn't had a ton of training because, again, sometimes people want their horses cheaper so they're not as finished. And then people just have to finish them themselves. So he's not totally sure what he's supposed to do here, but he's getting it. Good boy. Good job. So today I'm going to show you how to ride buttons, but I figured I would uh, explain some other things such as engagement to you or how to get a horse to kind of become more light in the front end and drive with its back end, which is called engagement. So first we're just going to stop. Uh, when you get a new horse and you teach it to put its head down, which I did with this guy, every time you stop after that, you want to be consistent because that's how you confuse horses is sometimes you stop and let them put their head up and sometimes you stop and ask them for their head down so they never know what they're supposed to do so you want to be consistent when a horse is new have a consistent schedule so they know what to expect use the same equipment the other people used and then after many months say six months or so when the horse is comfortable in the new situation then you can start playing around with itself if it comes with shoes keep shoes on if you can Keep the same bit and then of course you can switch if you change too many things and you don't understand gated horses you can sometimes cause them not to gate or you can just cause confusion so see he was just doing lateral flexion well and now he's confused he's like do i turn my head or i don't turn my head she usually doesn't talk when she does this what's going on now if he doesn't get in a minute or so i'm just going to put a little bit more pressure i'm just wiggling my fingers just to get him to give a little bit more. And I don't need him to turn his head all the way around. This is an older horse. Lots of older horses have arthritis somewhere in their body, so you're not trying to do anything crazy with them. They're not as flexible. I'm not as flexible as I was. But he's a nice, calm horse, and he did have some training on him, but he uh, sat for a while, so he was a little rusty at it. When you pick up your reins, pick them up. I'm riding with the colored reins, and I, after I do the lateral flexion, I ask them to put their head down just by closing my fingers around the reins. Everybody will do this differently, so the horse has to learn the new person's touch. And so I'm just squeezing and staying still till he figures it out. Once he gives, I give back, so he knows that's the right answer. But I'm using the colored reins. That's way the new person, if they want, they can get colored reins, and they know exactly where I was holding it in the blue. I like to make circles when I start because I want the horses to be nice and slow. For the people, many gated horses are way too fast because they're immediately asked to go forward. And lots of people don't know that about the gated horses, so they think they're going to go slow, and they don't. So you want to make sure the horse can walk slow and that he bends and gives to the bit, which he's doing just fine. So I'm riding him with a very light touch and just using my thumb and I have my fingers slightly around the reins but it's not much pressure at all and again when new people start with a new horse sometimes they use different pressure and uh, you know they're not as good with their signals it confuses the horse so they might have to use more pressure than me in the beginning but over time they should get lighter if the horse isn't turning well I just open my hand instead of pulling back but when I'm bending them, I'm usually just squeezing the rein back towards my hip. And then if they're confused or drifting, I open it up and press the outside rein against it. Once they turn, I go back to bending. So I like to make lots of circles and then figure eights, making sure everything's going okay with the horse, that it's okay with the bit, and you're not out on the trail or somewhere else first. And you want to make sure they're steering, responding well in case you don't feel good that day or the horse doesn't feel good that day. It's better to find out before you start asking for harder maneuvers. So he's doing his figure eight just great. So in his mouth is a wonder bit, which they also call a gag bit. And people will make lots of comments thinking these bits are very mean and all of that. And people fight over bits all the time. I'm not here to fight with anybody over bits. I'm just going to explain it. So this is kind of like a loose ring snaffle, but with a shank on it. Why am I using it? I rode this horse with everything. I rode him in a 
Snaffle, which he completely hated, but it was a little bit wider than this in the mouthpiece. He wanted to pull on it. He didn't understand it. He was trying to put his tongue out, and I wasn't even putting much pressure on it. So I knew he hated it. I put him in a miler uh, short shank bit, and he did okay. And then I tried him in this, the wonder bit. And this is what he picked. So I don't pick the bits for the horses. I try different things, and I go what they're happiest in. Okay? All the horses have different mouths. Some have low palates. Some have higher palates. Some love the snaffles, some hate the snaffles. I find many horses do not like really wide mouthpieces in their mouth. They do well with ports. That's our serpentine. Now I'm just going to go out and walk slow. It just depends what the horse likes. If the horse doesn't like a bit, he will tell you. He will throw his head, or she will throw their head, stick their tongue out, shake their head up and down. They will do all sorts of things. They might even turn and try to bite your foot if they really don't like that bit. I am just alternating my legs, one and then the other, just to have them do this slow trail walk. And we're just on a nice relaxed train. I'm in the blue kind of towards the green, and I'm going to start making circles. And I'm doing all of this just slowly, so when they get on, they can walk real slow if they're nervous. But his head carriage is just fine. I don't want it lower than this. If they get too low, some of the walking horses tend to... Uh, fall asleep on their feet, and people will think I'm nuts when I say that, but I've ridden thousands and thousands of walking horses, and the calm ones, yes, they seem to go out to lunch. So that's just what I call it. So I'm walking a little bit faster because now he wants to go to the mounting block because he thinks that's a good place. So the horse will tell you if it likes the bit or not. He was very quiet when I put him in this bit. He didn't pull on it. He didn't throw his head. He didn't do anything. And he did all of that with the snaffle in his mouth. So you're trying to ask the horse, what are they comfortable in? I start them all in a snaffle. And with him, if they do well, they can switch these reins. That's the nice part on these wonder bits. They can switch the reins to the snaffle part. And then it's just a plain snaffle with some decoration hanging down. But your reins aren't attached to it. So once they can keep his head down, well, and he stays relaxed, and they have good control, they can do that, and then they can go to a loose ring snaffle. But I'm trying to help people in the beginning to be able to get the horse's head down, get them engaged and light on their front end, and not everybody is a great rider or knows what to do or has good timing or feel in the beginning. So that's why you'll see me use many different bits on the horses to help the people. But again, don't fight with people over bits. Whatever works well for their horse is what they should use. You might think it's harsh, but if the horse isn't reacting to it, it's comfortable in it, then they probably have light hands, good communication, and that horse is used to the bit, so why change it? Why not just leave them in what they're happy with? With also bits, I'll talk a little bit more on bits. If you're going to go to a Hackamore uh, bitless side pull, all those things are fine. Just know it's easier to teach the horse with a bit because the communication is more sensitive and so if you give a half halt or cue the horse will feel it quicker and you won't have to put usually as much pressure on it and they usually won't lean on it as much as they will those other things once the horse understands all the cues and is doing well sure you can switch to anything you want but just know that some of those things people are in side pulls bitless hackamores if you're hanging on it because the horse is putting pressure, you keep yanking on it, you yank it on their nose, which be, can be quite sensitive. So people say the bit's mean, but then isn't yanking on their nose, or you have that hackamore or side cold so low it's on their cartilage, and then you're cutting off the breathing. So don't fight with people, just do what works for you, and then let everybody else figure out what works for them. So we're just leg yielding. I don't have much contact on him, but I do have a light contact. And he, there he just got a little fast because I put leg on him. So when he got a little bit too fast, I just lightened my leg so he understood to relax and slow down. So I bring my energy up to make them go. I bring my energy down and remove leg to slow them down. And that way the horse understands when you bring your energy up, they're supposed to move out. When you relax, they relax and calm down. Okay? So he understands leg yield. He does that very well. Now I'm going to do the stop. And with him, I do what I do with all the horses. I take my leg off, deep breath in, 
And see how he stopped? I never had to even touch this bit. Not at all. So then I'm going to back him up. So I'm going to apply pressure and a little leg. And once he starts to back up, I like to release. Because in time, I wanted to sit back and have the horse back up. Now his head's a little high. So once I'm done backing up, I'm just going to hold light pressure. And once he puts his head down like that, I'm going to give to him. So I just push my hands forward because my reins are a little bit shorter. I let him sit here for a little bit. I did forget to fly spray you. I'm sorry, buddy. And now I'm going to move on. So when you see him throwing his head, that's not the bit. That's just him getting at the flies, okay? So my fingers are very light. I hold the reins like I'm holding two chickens. My fingers are slightly rounded around the reins. The thumb is pushing down on the top of the rein. When you see people who are holding it and their fist is just around and their thumb's not down, they probably weren't the top English way to hold their reins. Just helps you know how much education they have or how they were taught. So pushing the thumb down helps to hold the reins in the hand. That's the benefit of it. So let's try another stop. So just like magic, this horse has learned, and not that long of training, to stop for me taking pressure off. Now I'm going to back up. I like to back up with every stop. It makes your stop much better. And if anything, when you stop, in case it's an emergency, you usually rather have them go backwards than forward off of a cliff, okay? But once you stop, let them sit there for a little bit and then add your leg to walk off. Horses make associations. They're very quick to train if you do it correctly. But people confuse them all the time, and we're very inconsistent, and we change what we're doing, or they got different riders on them, so they don't understand. Or if they did understand, somebody confuses them and tells them a new way to do something, and they're totally confused. Okay, so we're going to stop again. Good boy. Now this time we're going to do a turn on the forehand. I teach all the horses the routine that I have on my website. And the horses then know the routine when they leave, even if the new owner doesn't. So he knows I usually do two backups. And on the third one, I stop. I might back up. But then I do a turn on the forehand. So if you get one of my horses and you're like, I stopped twice. And then he just turned himself around. That's because he knows the routine. I try to do that so somebody knows the routine. Okay, so I'm just pressing with one leg and then the other. So I'm going to do the same thing, circles and leg yield. And I really am just holding the reins. I'm not half halting or anything. I'm just steering and bending when I go across the turn. So I'm going to talk about engagement. What is engagement? Engagement is when we ask the horse to use its hindquarters, drive underneath itself, to carry itself in a more balanced manner so they can carry a rider. And they kind of raise their back up underneath the saddle, round that back out, kind of tuck their belly in, and then they start driving with their hindquarters. Why would we want them to do that? We want them to do that because then they're stronger to carry us. It gives the horse more power when we need it. So, you know, it's kind of like getting the engine and the car adjusted right. And it makes them lighter in the front end. Why don't we want a horse heavy in the front end? If a horse is heavy in the front end, they will be more unbalanced. If they trip, they're more likely not to catch themselves and to fall. And then they're going to be leaning on your hands. When you go down a hill, if a horse is heavy on its front end, it's going to feel more like you're falling down that hill or that the horse is unstable and has a problem. So many of the gated horses are heavy on their front end. And so what we try to do is drive them forward with our leg, even when I'm doing this slower walk, and then catch the energy with your hand. So it's not so much you're pulling their heads down. We push them with our legs, get their hindquarter to start driving underneath them, which these circles work really well at driving their hindquarters underneath them. And so does your stop and your backup. And then you hold lightly with your hands and you capture that energy. Then you're trying to keep, oh, I forgot, I started flat walking. You're trying to stay very light with your hands. And so the horse can carry itself. And then you sit up there and balance yourself. And then you try to work together as a team to make it a balanced picture and also to make it easier for the horse to carry you. Okay? So 
That's engagement a long way. Now, ways you get your horse to engage itself is one, circles, and pushing that horse forward because it gets their hind end driving underneath themselves. When you make a circle, they reach under themselves more with the inside leg. So in this direction, it's his right leg. And it'll start to teach them how to engage themselves. It is hard, so if the horse is out of shape, you don't want to ask for too much too fast. Just do it at a slow walk. Okay? Now I'm going to leg yield this direction while we're talking. And it's always a surprise when I end the videos and find out the microphone didn't work or something shut off. <laughs> it's very disappointing because I can never come up with the same stuff again. After you do it once, it's just not the same. So we're trying to get these horses light to carry themselves because, again, we know they, many keep their feet lower to the ground, especially the pacey ones and they can tend to trip more. So if we engage their back end and get more weight on their back, back end, the front end becomes lighter and they can also lift their feet higher, which helps. Now, when you see them riding with heavy shoes or any of the big lick, okay, or when you're riding a horse uphill, that is pushing them on their back end, okay? The hill does it naturally, but the shoes, the long feet, the big lick and all of that is unnatural. But that's what they're usually trying to get is an engagement, but it's not a natural engagement. So we kind of do basic dressage here, and so we're trying to get a natural engagement. So we're going to stop and back up. So backing up is a very good exercise for engagement. You ask him to back up, I get his head down, then I push him forward. And you'll feel them push off with their back end. When you go up a hill, if you have that horse walking and you get them to have their head slightly down, not lazy down, just down like he has it, you'll feel them pushing you up the hill. It's a weird sensation when you haven't felt it in the beginning. It's kind of like you're on an escalator or somebody's pushing you from behind up the hill. So we're going to stop and we're going to back up. So pull, release while I'm squeezing and release. Squeeze, release. I want to get his head down. So get his head down. Oh boy, now I'm going to push him forward. And you'll feel him rock back on that hind quarter and go forward. Now if you've been on a horse that rears up, which many of us have, that's an extreme engagement. Okay, they're really on their hind quarters, aren't they, when they do that. We don't want that much. We just want a little bit. Okay. okay. See, as I keep talking, I'm changing what I'm doing and I'm starting to flat walk because then I'm not paying attention as much. So we're going to do another stop. We're going to do another turn on the forehand. And I have many videos on turn on the forehands. This is more like disengaging their hindquarter. So that's not engaging it. Engaging it was when they get their hindquarter underneath them and push. And that's why the rear is an extreme engagement, which we don't want to do because it's not very safe. But if they're trying to do something like that and you disengage their hindquarter, they can't plant their feet to get it underneath them. Okay, so now we're going to flat walk. So I like to flat walk in circles because the circle helps the horse to bend, but you do have to bend them. So I picked up a little speed. And all I'm doing is asking him to go forward. As I hold my proper potty position over him, he gates well, so I'm just in a neutral position with my shoulder over my hip and my heel hopefully somewhat under my hip. And I'm just pressing with one leg and then the other. Now, if your horse won't go forward, you might have to carry a stick to help get that energy from the hindquarter. If your horse is lazy, don't work on engagement first. Just work on your go button and get that horse going forward when you ask. And then you can start working on engagement. But otherwise, you're going to be working too hard. Okay? Now, this horse is actually very light. Whoops. Went a little too fast there. It's okay. Again, we all make mistakes, so don't get mad at the horse. you got to figure it out. And I'm talking as I'm doing this, so I'm not as focused. But I'm trying to push him underneath himself and then catch him with my fingers very light. Remember, I'm holding like two little chickens here. So if we do it right and I drop the reins, he might lower his head a little bit more, but he's not going to change much. So he understands what I'm asking. He's not changing speed. Remember when I talked about dressage and the article, speed is your tempo, in case you hear somebody use that word and you don't know what it means. It's just the speed of the gait that you're doing. 
And that way we talk about rhythm. We're trying to keep the same rhythm as we go around, too. That's just the football sequence. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So to have the correct gait, you have to keep the right speed. You have to get the correct football first. And then you're trying to engage your horse and get them to work more off of that backhand. When you feel that they're driving pretty well, or you feel their back come up under need you under the saddle you'll feel like you raise up a little bit that's when you want to stop and rest the horse because then you're telling them that's the right thing now when i rest horses i always like to do it on a loose rein i hold the buckle the reason i do that is a lot of people are micromanaging their horses and their horses are stuck on go and they are always holding the horse so the horse never learns to contain its own energy and be relaxed and come down to a calm state. So that's why if I have a forward horse, I teach it one rein stops in the beginning. I do lots of circles to let it know that if it changes speed, I'm going to give it something else to do that's not so fun. Then in time, they will contain their own energy and realize when we bring our energy down, they're just supposed to sit and relax. So when he's on the buckle, he can put his head up and down. He can look around all around. He can put his head down, but not past his knees, because if his nose goes to the ground, they get distracted and they will tend to walk off. But as long as he's calm, he's fine. Now, if you're on a new horse and you're scared, you can hold the reins like this. So he still has a big loop, but if something happened, I could sit back and take my reins and I'd be okay. If you never rest the horse and they never have you stop pulling on their mouth, as a defense, they will yank on the bit. The bit might be fine in their mouth, but it's the hands on the end of the reins that's the problem, and you're pulling on them the entire time. You have to learn how to ride well, how to relax your body, and then help your horse to understand that when you relax, they're supposed to calm down, and then they are supposed to relax, and that's break time. And then when you change it, when you pick the reins up, do not walk off, because otherwise horses associate the reins being short with going forward. You want to pick the reins up, just hold them, and then I'm going to change directions. Then use your leg to make them go forward. So they understand legs mean forward, hands mean slow down, or pressure on the reins means slow down or to tuck their head in. But you have to be very consistent with that for the horse to understand. Okay? So now we're just going to flat walk in this direction. So again, could I have a looser rein? I sure could. But... In the beginning, when you get used to new horses, it's better to have a little bit of a shorter rein because you can quickly give a little hop halt so they understand. But if I'm on the end of the rein, they won't understand it as well because it takes longer to get that communication to their mouth. As you get better, you could. So I'm in the blue by the red. Oops. There's our arena footing coming up underneath us. But as I get better, I could hold on a longer rein like this, but I don't want his head way down. We still want to teach him to carry himself. But then I might have to keep lifting my hands up. So it's on a looser rein, but now my hands are higher, and I'm trying to make a nice picture. So I'm going to shorten up and keep them where I had them. I sometimes see people riding like this, which, you know, they're trying to get the horse's head down. It's up to you how you ride them. I just don't think that's a very pretty picture. And horses are beautiful, so why not make a nice pretty picture? You look pretty, they look pretty. Okay? So this is our flat walk. He's very light. His back is coming up underneath me. I can feel it. But again, if you're a new rider, you might not feel that in the beginning. But you will in time if you just keep practicing. Okay? So I'm very light with my hands, holding two chickens. When I go to turn, I'm just squeezing and relaxing on the inside rein. If he didn't turn, I press with my outer rein and leg, which is the left side. And then once he turns, go back to the inside rein and leg to get him to bed. So again, with the engagement, driving underneath you, when I'm doing the flat walk, I alternate my legs. It just helps the horse to reach up a little bit more. Seems to work quite well. But you could use two legs, whatever works for you. So there's many different ways to do things. There's many different trainers that will tell you different things. The hard part is, as they say, don't have too many chefs in the kitchen. It gets very confusing. They might all be making the same meal, but they'll make it a little bit differently, and they'll do it in different steps. 
So if you're following different trainers, because of course we know you're all watching different people, try to pick and choose and keep it somewhat similar for the horse. But if you're constantly changing what you're doing because they're telling you a new thing, it makes it very hard for the horse to figure out what you want. And then it becomes inconsistent. And then you're thinking, none of this stuff is working. I'm not working on engagement. But you have to work it the same. So pick a person. See who works for you. I just took a breath there. That's why you slowed down. And then that's who you want to, I guess, follow the most. Or just try to not confuse the horse. Don't change things too much. Realize most of us are saying the same thing, just in a little bit different manner. Okay? And depending on how many horses we've trained and what has worked for us is what we're going to talk about more. Okay? I have a lot of horses in training. Some people are just on the road giving clinics and stuff. I like to do both. Everybody's different. Otherwise, it uh, it's not as fun if I'm doing that. So, of course, I love the horses the most. I like people, but I love the horses, so I try to spend most of my time with them. So now I'm going to stop riding. Now I'm going to ask for his head down, and then I'm going to give him break time. Okay? So he's on the buckle again. This is the buckle. So remember, when it's break time, don't mess with them. Don't be sitting here talking to somebody or talking to your trainer and you start holding your horse like this because he keeps moving. If he keeps moving, I'm going to give him a job to do. So say he walked off on me, I would shorten up my rein, stop, back him up five steps. Drop my rein, ask him to stand again. Okay. If he walked off again, I'll shorten up my rein, stop, back up ten steps. Ask him to stand there again by loosening up on my rein. You want your horse to be able to control himself. You don't want to have to keep holding him there. If he walked off again, I'd say, okay. I'd shorten up my reins, think he's not getting the message. I'm going to make it harder. I would back up, but now I'm going to back the horse in a circle, and I might back up 20 steps. Drop the reins, ask him to stand again. He walks off again. I'm going to make two circles backwards, and so on. You can make any pattern you want. You just want to keep amping it up until the horse figures out, you know what, every time I move, she gives me something to do, which is worse. I'm not getting any benefit out of it. Maybe I'll just stand here and see what happens. So when they stand there, then you're like, good boy, what a good job. But if you're constantly holding them, they will never learn to control themselves. It's the same thing when you're riding out on trail. You're trying to go slow and fast and slow and fast and do lots of transitions. But some people just want to go slow so the horses never get used to going any faster. And if something happens and they get scared and that speed comes up because they're scared, so they start going, they almost scare themselves. So it's good, even if you want to walk, to walk faster, walk slower, walk faster, walk slower, and keep changing it so the horse gets used to making those transitions and knowing when the energy comes up, it is going to come down, so they don't need to panic with any of that. Okay. So shorten up the reins. Do not walk off. Let's do another turn on the forehand, because you can never get those too good. And that one wasn't that good, but that's okay. Now I'm going to use my legs. Ask them to go forward. So now, again, he's a Tennessee walking horse, so now we're going to do a little bit of a running walk. So the running walk is just a fast, flat walk. So I'm asking for a little bit more energy, and then I'm ready to catch the energy with my hands. So I just keep a light contact, letting him know that's the right thing to do. And then as much as I can, I try to have my fingers. There he just stopped because I talked. I try to have my fingers very light. So I'm not really holding him. I'm just trying to give him a signal, like stay in this position with your head in that frame. And then I'm just going to leave you alone, and I just want you to kind of keep driving underneath yourself. Now, again, you'll see at times he's, he's kind of jerky. He's going fast, and then he's going slow. Because I'm talking, he's trying to focus on what I'm doing. And, and he didn't learn this that long ago. So he's like, what am I supposed to do? I feel her keep breathing. So am I supposed to go fast? Am I supposed to go slow? So he's just got to get me used to me talking and doing this at the same time. And that takes some time. So remember with your running walk, because you'll hear different people say different things, they will shake their head. They might shake their head more, they might shake it less, but it will shake its head if it's a running walk or if it's a fox trot, okay? If it's not shaking its head, it's not those gates. I've even heard other trainers go, 
Uh, not all horses shake their head at the running walk. Well, I've had thousands, and not one has done that if they're doing the correct gait. They don't shake their head if they're step pacing, and they don't shake their head if they're doing a saddle gait or a rack, or they won't shake it very much. So those things are true, but they're doing a running walk. They're shaking their heads some, okay? So that's a sign that maybe they don't really know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> but if you like them and they help your horse, hey, who cares? Just be happy, okay? It's good to have guidance. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're not show people here. But I'm just trying to, I guess, demyth any things like that because I've heard some pretty good trainers say things like that. So this is our running walk. So when you're starting in the beginning to get your running walk, you go faster, not a lot faster than your flat walk, just a different speed that your horse can hold and not go into the pace. And then when they're doing it well, you stop and rest. Okay? And you do that over and over again. So when I'm doing it, I flat walk usually five minutes, which I'm not putting on this recorder. Then I'll do the running walk, usually a couple of minutes in the beginning, and then in time I work it up to five minutes or more. I do the same thing on trail. I'll keep changing what we're doing. Oh, boy. So he's a very kind horse. He's a very nice horse. He was an older horse that uh, somebody wasn't riding, and uh, he's turning into a great arena horse. And But again, even though I can ride him well and he's very quiet with me, horses have to get used to people, and that takes some time. So let's shorten the reins. He's like, that break wasn't long, but the video's going to run out. So we're going to do another turn on the forehand. This one's better. He's walking a little bit, but not bad. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going to go forward. So leg and then alternate our legs, and we're going to speed him up. So the hard part when, you, when you're watching these videos, of course, I ride a lot of different horses. I know this horse, so I know what speed he can go. But you're, when you're riding horses, people don't know what speed they can go. And I can tell you the biggest mistake people make is going way too fast. Or they buy a horse that had long feet and heavier shoes on, and they tried it at the facility, and the horse went pretty fast and stayed smooth, and then they bring it home and pull its shoes off and trim its feet because they think its feet hasn't been done in a long time. Oh, no, they were. They just wanted those feet long to help with the breakover. And so now when they go that speed, that horse is pacing or step pacing. So anytime they have long feet or a heavy shoe, you're going to have to retrain that horse and condition it to hold a slower speed and then slowly build up from there. And it might never get back to that same speed that you were going when you tried that horse because a lot of times when they don't have the heavy shoe on or the longer feet, they can't do that speed. And when they try to do that speed, they're step pacing or pacing because they're telling you they can't do it naturally but they can pace really fast, and they try to do what you want. So it's better to go too slow in the beginning than too fast. Even when you're trying the horses, go a little bit slow. So again, you'll see he gets going, and then he gets confused, and he slows down, and I push a little with my leg, and then he picks his head up because he's unsure. But he's a lovely horse. He's learned to put his head down and do all these things pretty quick, but they have to keep it up. Horses are all about training, and you have to keep training and trying to get better. That's why most of us like it. But if you don't want to do those things, then you buy the best trained horse you can and the oldest one you can because then it'll take you longer to take the training off. But if it's really well trained and it's four years old, well, it's probably only had a year of training, so it's much easier to take that training off versus you buy a 18 or 20 year old that's had lots of training on it. Okay, it's harder to mess it up. Okay, so now we're just gonna turn and then we're gonna do his side pass. Okay, good boy. So again, I just turned him, then I dropped the reins. Don't let them pull the reins out of your hands. Don't give until they sit there and give to the bit and relax and then loosen your reins up, but do it quickly. Some people go like this, and they allow the horse to pull the reins out of his hand because they go, I want him to pull down. And I'm like, well, pulling down is not a good thing. It means he's pulling the reins out of your hands. 
So once you're like this and you're ready to give a break, just grab the buckle, put it down, and then you'll see the horse won't do anything bad. But they learn associations really quick. If they pull the reins out of your hands, they learn to pull. If they yank on that bit and you let go, they learn to yank on the bit. If they drag you over to their friends and they get a rest over there or they feel comforted by those friends, even if they're only there a minute before you try to correct it, that's what they just learned. Drag you over there, I feel better. You have to teach the horse the right associations. So that's like giving to pressure, moving off your leg. They don't know to move sideways off your leg, which I'm going to do with him in a minute. So it's not going to be perfect, his side pass. You have to teach them these things. They're not born knowing this. They usually lean into pressure. So you're teaching them to give to pressure, and you want to do that in a specific order. You don't want to get on the horse that doesn't know anything and try to teach it to side pass. It has to learn the basics first, and then you teach it those things. So a leg yield, which is going forward and sideways, that's much easier than the side pass. And when you start the side pass, it's much easier to do it in front of a fence. And then when they can do that well, you try it in front of a pole. And then when they can do that well, then you can start doing it without anything in front of you. Because what happens is what he just did, they go a little bit forward. So you hold, keep pushing. Now he might be opening his mouth and stuff with this bit. It's not that he hates the bit or anything. He's just, just learned this, so it's not very long. Good. And make your sessions pleasurable. Quit on a good note. If you don't feel good or the horse is not acting well or it's windy or it's too hot out, just ride. You can ride for five minutes. Get on. Just walk around. Get used to the horse. It's no rush. It can take years to get all this stuff done. All right. That was a lot of information. Poor Buttons is like, oh, my God, she talks so much. All right. Hopefully this came out, and hopefully you learned a lot from it. And I guess that's it. Hope it helps.